Welcome to our daily Bible devotional. Today is Monday, June 15th, 2020. And I hope you're having a great start to your work week. And we had a wonderful day in the house of the Lord yesterday, Sunday morning and Sunday evening. And we thank the Lord for uh, speaking to us through his word and decisions that were made. And we praise God for that. I want to wish a happy birthday today to a couple of our members, uh, Mrs. Kelly Whitaker. And Kelly, God bless you. Hope you have a great day today. And then Mrs. Naomi Sawyers. And Naomi, happy birthday. And Naomi's our daughter, our oldest daughter. And uh, Naomi was born in Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, that was my first ministry in Iowa, not far from Des Moines. And uh, we remember uh, that day very well that Naomi came into this world. And we love you. Naomi, hope that you have a great birthday today. And don't forget Wednesday prayer and Bible study at 7 o'clock. And it's going to be right here in person. And so you're able to come this Wednesday. Please come. And if you're not able, then continue to watch online uh, services, and we'll do that again on Wednesday night. Well, if you have a Bible close by, open to Colossians chapter number 1. Colossians 1. And I want to read the first five verses here in chapter 1 of Colossians and begin a devotional that uh, uh, we'll spend about three days on, mentioning some things, and I'll explain to you in just a moment. But in verse number 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye have heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. You know, there are three very important virtues that ought to be evident in the life of every child of God. And these virtues are the result of the, uh, what God does by his Holy Spirit as we surrender to the Spirit of God. And he uh, produces and develops these fruits and these virtues in our lives. When Paul was writing to the Colossian saints, he, he um, commended them uh, for these virtues. Uh, he was... Uh, uh, encouraged by the virtues that were very evident uh, in their lives in this uh, great church in Colossae. And so what are these virtues? Well, he mentions the first one, is what we're going to look at today, and uh, the virtue of faith, the virtue of faith. So he says in verse uh, number four, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. Now, that's an amazing statement, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. It says a whole lot about these people. What is faith, anyway? Well, first of all, faith is the ability to trust God no matter what the circumstances are. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith. And so regardless of the circumstances, we just continue to trust God, even when our circumstances dictate something different. That's faith believing that God is in control, even when it seems like everything is out of control. And then the second thing about faith is faith is action based on what God has said. And that's what Paul is saying here. Uh, we heard of your faith. It's, it's not just something that's internal only, uh, but it's something that's external. It's the action. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10:17. But in James chapter 2, it says, even so, faith, if it hath not works, is what? Well, it's dead, okay? And so it's more than just saying, man, I've got faith in God. Well, that's great. So what are you doing with that faith in God? Somebody put it this way. We are not saved by faith plus works, but we are saved by a faith that works. I like that. And so we're saved by grace. For by grace, I say, through faith and not in yourself is the gift of God, not of works any man should boast. So we're not boasting that we got saved because of our works. But if we're truly saved, there are going to be works in our lives that prove that we have faith in Christ. Now, turn, if you would, in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And a very familiar passage of Scripture to many of God's people. We call it the Hall of Faith or the fame of uh, faith of those that... Uh, uh, express their faith in Christ and in God. In verse number one, he just he gives a description of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So he tells us what, what faith is in verse one, but then verses four through 40 tells us what faith does. And just for example, 
Verse 4, by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Abel did something by faith. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated, he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his, this trans, his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. In verse number 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God of things seen as, uh, not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He did something. In verse number 8, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed and he went out, not knowing whether he went. And we can go on with this the rest of the chapter. And so these are folks that the Bible says they had faith in God, but it wasn't just an emotion. Uh, it was a reality. It was action. And they proved their faith by what they did. And so I want to challenge you today. What are you doing by faith? It's one thing to say I have faith, another thing to let other people see it. <laughs> and that's what God wants us to do. One of the areas that uh, uh, just stands out in my mind when we talk about faith and trusting in God is actually in the area of giving in our finances. And through the years, I've had countless people, many people, even recently, last week, uh, people coming to me and saying, Pastor, I just want you to know how faithful God is. Um, you know, sometimes there are, there's more month than there is money. You know, I don't know if you've ever been there. Uh, but people have told me, you know, Pastor, we, we didn't know how we are going to make our ends meet to help pay the bills, but we, we were challenged in our area and our heart to, to give our tithes and offerings anyway and trust God. And without, without fail, uh, these same believers have been able to tell me afterwards, you know, a day or two later or a week later or whatever it was, that somehow God did something miraculous and provided their need. Uh, some people it was through the mail, uh, a check they weren't expecting. Uh, somebody gave them money. Somebody did something for them. It's just God has ways of doing things to just show us that, uh, you know, if you just trust me, I'm going to take care of you. And so faith is, is not just uh, something that we feel. It's something that we do, okay? And so do you have faith today in God? Say, yeah, I'm trusting the Lord. Okay, so what are you trusting God for and what are you doing by faith? Faith without works is dead. I hope you take that to heart and let's ask God today, how can we show our faith in Christ? Let's go Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God and uh, once again, as you do every single day, we open up the Bible. Uh, you challenge us, you speak to us and God, there's nothing that uh, challenges us more than when we're challenged in our faith. Thank you for faith in Christ. It's believing in the Lord and on the Lord and for salvation. But it's also a walk by faith. And it's a daily uh, uh, exhibit, God, of our faith in Christ. The things that we do that show that we are trusting you. So I pray today, Lord, that we would not only just say we have faith, but, Lord, that we would live faith and uh, show our faith. Bless God's people today and please be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great Monday.